What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of CNT. This is episode number 53 and we start this off with a scouting update, our first of the year and an academy update as well. Uh, so far no one good from the very first four players given to us in our scout report. In fact I rejected them all, that's how bad they were. And also we look at our academy as well, Reese Roberts is the best player we got so far. 58 overall, centre forward, 17 years old. To me he looks like more of again a playmaker as opposed to a striker. And that's obviously what we're looking for. We're looking for an out-and-out -out striker this year uh, from our youth scout, of course, with the nine months in Wales. I'd say this guy's more a centre forward. I have to say as well, I'm finding that more and more in this year's FIFA CMs. I show you a fixture for September here. Forest Green Rovers, the Vegans in the EFL Cup second round. Liverpool away at Anfield. Aston Villa and the Saints away uh, for our three games in the Premier League this month. I'm finding that more and more in this year's FIFA CM. Centre forwards and attacking midfielders are in abundance. You find like a ton of them. But strikers are like gold dust. Finding great natural strikers and natural all-out strikers in this year's FIFA CM for your academy. I don't know why, but they just they don't exist or so it seems. You can get some great centre forwards and some false nines and whatever. But strikers... No, not your out-and-out -out goal scorers. For some reason, they're just not there. And I always say, it seems like every single year with like youth academy players, there always seems to like be like an abundance of one particular position where you find so many of them. I remember a few years ago, it seemed like every nine-month mission, there was always like one or two like world-class young goalkeepers you can get. But nowadays, it's harder to find them. It seems to change with EA every single FIFA. But anyway, for the first game of today's episode, on the back of back-to-back -back defeats against West Ham and Norwich City, well, I was kind of glad to see this. Yeah, League to Forest Green Rovers coming to take on in the EFL Cup third round and heading into the game after big back-to-back -back losses. I needed a big win. I needed to get the fans off my back and get a victory and through to the third round, which we would do pretty convincingly. You would have seen on my line of into the game, I had some starters out there because I thought, you know what? Like, I can't take any chances. We can't lose back-to-back -back with big margins and then get dumped out of the cup to a League 2 side. That's not going to fill me with any confidence whatsoever of staying up in the Premier League. So I've a few starters. You had Joe Rodden out there. You had Rabi Matonda. You had Gavin Humphreys, Ruben Colwell. Quite a few starters out there. And once you went 3 it up, I didn't even wait until half-time. We scored our third through Rabi Matonda. I said, right, Gavin, Joe, Rabi, off you come. You ain't playing any more minutes. I'm not risking you getting injured in a game where we've clearly already made the progress. So we were 3 it up early, and then after we got ourselves our fourth goal through Colwell. Reese came off the bench to make it five with 23 minutes to go in what was going to be a very convincing victory. 18 minutes on the clock. Didn't really show mercy in this game because I've talked about the importance of form and when you're in good form, when you're winning games by several goals, you tend to keep it going for a long period of time. So I thought the bigger the scoreline we can have, the better our morale would improve by and the higher chance we've got of taking this into our next games. Reese made it 6-0 late on bag in this brace and that would do it. Three braces is in a 6-0 victory. One for Ravi, one for Colwell, one for Reese. And if you can't tell by my list, guys, I got my braces put on last week. <laughs> but uh, still, <laughs> can I put myself on a score line with a brace there? Probably not. Doesn't uh, <laughs> doesn't really count. But still, following that, as you can see, we had two international friendlies as we made it through to the EFL Cup third round. We've got Peter reunited the posh away at London Road to a championship side there. That's coming as the fourth game of five in today's episode. And two international friendlies, we had Wales and Iceland, drew the first one 2-2, two, two, and then lost the second and one free uh, sorry two one uh, away from home so yeah I'm a little bit worried of course if you missed the last episode I showed you the full calendar for the season and there are no qualifiers with Wales as we know it's 2026 come the end of the season and that would mean in the summer there will be the World Cup in the Americas but it's looking likely we won't be playing it. And again, there's no qualifiers. It's just international friendlies all throughout the year. So slightly concerned we may never have a national tournament of Wales. I guess we'll have to wait and see. So for the second game of today's episode, and the first one back in the Premier League today, Liverpool away at Anfield, Jurgen Klopp's side, and despite a big 6-0 win against Forest Green Rovers, I didn't know how many positives in that game we could take into this one here against one of the best teams in the world. Yeah, we fell down a goal early. Donny van der Beek, former Red Devil, makes it 1-0 for the Reds as Liverpool take the early lead, and whilst Dan James almost got us back on level terms with his second goal of the season, smacking one off the crossbar. Unfortunately, it's just one of those games where I knew 
knew that my best was never going to be good enough against one of the stronger teams in the world. We went 2-0 down soon after. It was 23 minutes in. What a goal this was from Ryan Gravenberch there, right to the top corner, making it 2. And then 36 minutes in, I just I couldn't stop the red tip. Fabinho, a brilliant free ball into Paolo Di Bar, and the former Juve man makes it 3. Yeah, at this point, I was like, okay, this could be a cricket score because I am all over the place. And defensively, once again, I'm getting torn apart like a hot knife through butter. It's the third straight game in the Premier League where I've conceded three. I was thinking, how can it get any worse? 44 minutes in, Rabi Matondo takes a tumble and is eventually forced off. Yep, little bit concerning there as Rabi goes down and eventually would not continue. So final score, 3-0 Liverpool. It's three straight defeats. It's nine goals conceded in three. And I guess the only good news was knowing that Rabi Matondo's injury was just a dead leg quad. So thank goodness for that. I remember the game was over and I was thinking, I don't care how bad the scoreline is. Just don't tell me Matondo's done for like three months. But yeah, just a six-day injury for Rabi. So he'll be okay for the following game against Aston Villa next weekend. However, on the back of three straight defeats, nine goals conceded, 11 goals shipped in our first four games. We have the worst defensive record in in the division for our first four matches and we're in the relegation zone as well. It's been a tough start for Newport County. So our following game, Aston Villa, Steven Gerrard side here at Rodney Preda for OK. Let's get our second win of this season. Early on into the game when Matondo's feeling fit when he's doing somersaults like that, yet back from injury and back with a goal. His third of the season already as he makes it Newport 1, Aston Villa 0. And I was thinking, right, stay tight, stay composed, let's keep the clean sheet. 22 minutes in, we've conceded. Yeah, Danny Ings makes it 1-1. I was like, I can't stop these guys, man. I really can't. Like, the jump from Championship to Premier League is going to be immensely difficult on the defensive end more than anywhere else. Last year, Price won the Golden Glove. Good luck getting at least just one clean sheet this season because I can't stop them. Following now, we almost got back in front though. Dan James heading wide from a Humphreys cross. It was still 1-1. And in the second half, we're nothing really going on in the first 20 minutes here. We had a chance to get ourselves back in front. James released by Rabi. Missed a chance in the first half. Got a second and this time took it. Clearly his strength and his weakness on full display in either half in this game. Can he win aerial duels and head the ball in on a consistent basis? Probably not. Can he get him behind the back line? Line and take his chance one-on-one -on -one. absolutely that's how he scored both goals this season first on the opening day and now here as well it's two for Dan James and two for Newport County we are in front for the second time and I was thinking right stay tight defensively stay composed keep Aston Villa at bay and get the three points 10 minutes to go Mark Rocker makes it 2-2 yeah just could not defend in this game here and that's something I'll be saying throughout the course of the season, I'm sure. Played well on the offensive end. One for Ravi, one for Dan James. The speeds is getting a goal each. But unfortunately, Aston Villa pegging us back on two separate occasions for a 2-2 draw. And whilst it does mean the lost streak ends after three straight games in the league, it's a missed opportunity there. Leading twice at home. Those are games you've got to close out in the Premier League. That's a big two points drop there against Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa. So 2-2. And in midweek, we had the posh away London the road Carabao Cup third round but heading to the game here I did decide to pick a, to a totally weak side for the game I was prepared to play a few starters in the one against Forest Green Rovers because I could not get the embarrassment being knocked out there to a League 2 side after back-to-back -back losses but I wouldn't mind how we got out there instead we made it through Terry Taylor scoring the only goal of the game in what was my 100th career win as Newport County manager but I was thinking this is typical man like the EFL Cup is a competition we don't care about I've got more wins in the EFL Cup than I've got in the Premier League so far. Awful start to the season for Newport County. So I thought, right, final game of September. Southampton, Ralph Hassan at All Saints away at St. Mary's. Look, we need our first away points of the season. So far, we've got zero. And if we get our first away win and our second of the campaign, that will be massive to get us away from the relegation zone. So early on into the game, we fell a goal down. I was thinking... I don't think I'm going to get a single clean sheet in the Premier League this year. Because nine minutes in, we were 2-0 down. Sebastian Haller squeezes one in at the near post. And on the south coast, it's 2-0. And I haven't even got out of the gates yet. I literally just could not defend. But the one thing I did know is to start the season off whilst I've been terrible defensively and already shipped 15 goals. 
I can score. 23 minutes in, we had half deficit and get back in the game. It's our dynamic duo linking up for the first time this season. Gavin Humphreys rolls it through. Brilliant through ball. And Ravi Matondo gets another goal in what has been a red hot start this season. So it's 2-1. We're back in the game, but only momentarily. A few minutes later and the two-goal cushion restored. Sebastian Hilaire bags his brace. It's 3-1. And I was thinking if this trend continues for the rest of the season, we might well ship over 100 goals in 38 games. I just cannot defend in the top tier. It's 3-1, but again, I kept on thinking, that's my weakness, I can't defend. But what's my strength? I can score. A few minutes later, a chance to make it 3-2, and we do so. Once again, deficit cut from 2-1. Ben Davis rolls it through, and Rabi bags his brace. 3-2, back in the game. Our forward is to go in the half, still only down by one. Rashesha wins it back. We quickly get the full forward. It's Gavin to Rabi once again. And for the second time in the game, the combo turns out to provide us with a goal. And it's a hat trick for Matondo in 40 minutes. Now, I'm going to say this right now. If it was not for this guy, we'd already be rock bottom with 0 0.6 in 6 for Ravi Matondo. He's not the reason we're struggling. First hat-trick of the season already, and put your money on this guy winning back-to-back -back golden boots. We've had a tough, 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 tough start to the Premier League, but the one guy who's off to a flyer, was it any real surprise? Ravi Matondo single-handedly keeping our heads above water. Back-to-back -back draws, 3-3 free -free on the south coast, and after six games, 16 goals conceded, but nine scored, that's the plus. We're one point clear of the drop in what has been a very difficult beginning to what I'm sure is going to be a very difficult season. But that will end this episode of CNC, guys. Massive thank you for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. Please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of C&C very soon.